and welcome to another episode of the British Columbia Real Estate Podcast. It's me, Ricky J, in the office slash podcast studio with the one and only Jeff Chatta, JC Holmes, episode 16. How's it going, Jeff? Not bad, Rick. You kind of paused there like you forgot who I was. <laughs> no, no. I was just adjusting your <laughs> volume levels in the mic here. Yeah. How have you been? Good? Ah, uh, not bad, not bad. You know, another day at the office. Another day at the office. Looks pretty busy and it's raining again. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk about the weather today, but... Oh, like I said, I don't care. <laughs> the weather. Really want to get on the topic again. I don't mind the rain sometimes, but you know, when, when you talk about it, it's a whole different level. <laughs> and don't forget, obviously, if you're thinking about moving around in British Columbia or to British Columbia, we definitely got your back. The number will be down below in the description. Give us a call anytime if you're thinking about moving to and or around in British Columbia. Now, jumping right into this episode, Jeff, it's probably one of our biggest podcast episodes yet to date. We have a very important interview today. We've been talking about it for a while. We've had to actually reschedule a couple times, but it's <laughs> actually getting done today with the president of REW.ca, Simon Bray. We're going to be having him live on the air here. Well, this isn't going to be actually so live, but while we're doing it, it's going to be live, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be really exciting. You do mm-hmm. DJing work, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, how you doing? Who have I got? Uh, hi, Simon. It's uh, me, Ricky J from the British Columbia Real Estate Podcast. How's it going? Yeah, good to good to meet you over the phone at least. How you doing, Ricky? I'm good. Excellent, excellent. I'm uh, in the studio here with Jeff. Hey, Jeff, you want to say hi? <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Hope you're having a great day in this lovely raining weather that we have. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeff. You too. I detect an accent. Oh yes, I'm a, I'm an ori- I'm originally a South African, so you're going to have to put up with a kind of flat version of English. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we'll forgive you this time. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, by looking at yourself and such a, a phenomenal history you've lived and just all over the world, Simon, you know, I'm still in shock that you're actually from South Africa. Are you initially from there initially or did you migrate? Yes, there? yes. So, so I'm, I'm originally from uh, South Africa, kind of grew up there, schooled there, went to varsity there, uh, actually started my first business there. And then got stuck into this whole uh, portal world, marketplace world around real estate. And that's taken me on a bit of a journey uh, to different parts of the globe and ultimately here to North America. So, so yeah, it's uh, it, originally a South African though. And you've been with REW uh, since the beginning of 2020, right? Or was that prior to that? Uh, no, it's so the beginning of 2020. That's right. I actually got here just before everything locked down and the world changed. But um, oh, yeah. but yes, uh, just before uh, 2020 kind of got real. <laughs> so just before the pandemic, right? Yes. yes. Wow. You, yeah, you guess you just made it just in time. Yeah. Right? You might have been stuck out there for a while. No, for sure. It was, uh, it was touch and go. But like, I mean, if you think back, the pandemic feels like something we could have predicted, but no one was really predicting it. Like some people were talking about something happening in China. That sounds quite hectic. But that was, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't a very big deal for anyone anywhere else in the world. So I was merrily going along my way, you know, uh, leaving my job in Europe, moving the family over from Europe to Vancouver, and if we'd got that wrong by even a couple of weeks, we would have been stuck in transit, which would have been terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. It, it would have took forever to come back and just rescheduling flights over and over. It's happened to some of my family who were visiting overseas during that time as well. No, it's crazy. And, and we got lucky because Madrid was actually one of the hardest hit cities right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Madrid was where we'd been living. So it would have been quite gnarly. Now, jumping right into this episode, Simon, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to have this interview with us. Oh, thanks for interviewing me. See, it's, 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 I'm yeah. excited because I get to ask questions because normally Ricky asks me questions on the show. So, <laughs> you know, it is kind of my turn. I'm like, I get to ask questions? Really? Right. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool. You get to flip the script. So, you know what? Let's just jump right into it. Now, um, Simon, what do you see as a most highly sought after area right now? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a tricky one because there are kind of two ways to answer this. It's, uh, you either answer it from a kind of um, gut feel, opinion basis, you know, what do I like, what don't I like? And that's, uh, I mean, that's a lot of how real estate works, right? It's a, it's a very personal decision. It's a very emotional decision. So mm-hmm. people are motivated by, uh, you know, their own kind of aspirations and insights. Um, but we look at it a little bit differently at REW. Uh, we get we get the privilege, I guess, of seeing 
the search pattern and the search behavior from you know millions of people across BC and how they interact with different listings on the platform. And so we can kind of form a view of what's popular based on uh, their engagement and 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 what they're connecting with. And so the markets that are really uh, moving, uh, the, the markets that are sort of above average performance in terms of engagement and, and search traffic and lead volume uh, to realtors are markets like Port Coquitlam, Langley, Abbotsford, Surrey, Delta. So they they markets that are you know, these big suburban markets just outside of, of Vancouver proper, uh, surrounding Vancouver. And that's not really that much of a surprise, right? Because that's been the engine room of, of a lot of the sales that's been, that have been happening in the last 12 months. But those are certainly areas that are still hot. I mean, that data is fresh as of yesterday. It's the last three months. So those markets are still moving a lot of interest in, in those areas. So from what you just said right now, it kind of actually ties perfectly into the next question. I mean, uh, you were saying Poquitlam, Langley, Surrey, Delta, I mean, besides Vancouver, we're basically looking at the Tri-Cities and Fraser Valley, which is kind of getting yeah, uh, yeah. excited, let's say, right? Yeah, look, we've had a little bit of a resurgence as well. Just in the last two, three months, we've seen a, a refocus towards some of the uh, closer or more, you know, um, downtown proximate uh, markets. Uh, as an example, uh, Mount Pleasant in Vancouver is doing pretty well. Uh, seems to be some some renewed energy and and uh, excitement for that market. But yeah, predominantly, I think that macro trend that was driven by the pandemic of people looking outside of the downtown core at these bigger suburban markets was is, is definitely continuing. And, and that's really the tail of the tape, you know, it's like at the moment, I think we're in a high demand environment still, like there are a lot of people that want to buy and there just isn't enough supply. So any market that has supply, it's almost like a vacuum. It's attracting the search uh, traffic because the listings are there. Right, right. And, you know, like I said, it, it ties right into the next question, I was going to say, with, with rising prices, um, what, what change in buyer activity do you see the most? Well, this is a really interesting one because affordability is something that people talk about a lot. I mean, we just had that local, well, federal election cycle uh, that that went by and all the parties were talking about different affordability policies that they want to bring in and how they want to kind of change that for Canadians. Uh, and, And certainly from our standpoint, you see the impact of it. It's like people desperately want... Uh, to buy a home, but they're challenged by the price that that the markets move to in some of these uh, neighborhoods. And Mm -hmm. so what we're seeing is the location focus hasn't changed. Like people still really want to get into the markets like I've just mentioned. Um, But those markets are traditionally detached home markets. So what we're seeing a lot of right now is people looking for apartments, condos, uh, townhomes, in those traditionally detached home markets. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of interest, for example, you know, in, in areas like uh, Cloverdale, as an example in Surrey, huge interest in, in townhomes in that market. And it's like 20 to 50% uh, more interest than in some of the other listings in that market. So people still want to move to that neighborhood. They just want to do it in a more economic fashion. So let's get a townhome, let's get a, uh, you know, one of these new developments. Perhaps we, we can pay today's price for something that will come out of the ground in 18 months' time. Uh, you know, finding any way they can to deal with the affordability challenge. Well, you know, Simon, it, it's like you have my set of questions in front of you because you're, you're segwaying you're right into my next line of questioning, yeah. which is condos versus townhouse versus single family. Well, has searches changed a lot on REW? Yeah. So, I mean, the pandemic threw up some trends which were really, ex- you know, exciting if you look at them from our perspective, but also very difficult to predict. So in the beginning, uh, there was this huge initial surge in demand for suburban markets and detached homes. It was like space and uh, was was more important than proximity to work, obviously, because no one had to go to work. And that, uh, that has certainly continued, but we are seeing the biggest increase in, in searches uh, over the last 12 months returning to 
uh, listing inventory like condos and townhomes. Mm -hmm. But but in markets where condos and townhomes are actually not that abundant, which is a bit unfortunate, you know, like uh, we've got a huge condo um, market in downtown Vancouver Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of cool buildings coming out of the ground. But the search engagement is actually in the suburban markets. It's places like, uh, believe it or not, Chilliwack, Delta, Mm -hmm. Abbotsford, Pitt Meadows. If there are townhomes or apartments or condos in those markets, people are getting very, very um, excited about that type of inventory. So, yeah, initially, huge surge in demand for detached homes. But I think as the price ratcheted up and everything else, and uh, now the focus is more on apartments and condos. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we did, really didn't see too much uh, multiple offer scenarios six months ago in Chilliwack for con- in terms of condos, townhouses, but now that's even peaked, right? Yeah. It, it's getting crazy. Yeah. No, it is. It has been quite an unusual story. I think, I think that's the biggest benefit in some regard to this kind of uh, reshaping of the market over the last uh, 18 months has been the... A revival or the resurgence of some of these suburban markets that sit just outside of the, the downtown uh, of Vancouver. You know, the whole the whole lower mainland has really benefited from from this buying spree, if you like. Uh, and I think that's quite cool. It's like it's really distributed the price growth. It's distributed communities. It's given communities an opportunity to think about how they build for the future. Yeah, it's decentralized things a bit, which I think is actually very positive in the long term. No, so I mean, like, like I've been actually a proud REW subscriber for for many many years. Uh, I use it all the time, and I often tell all of my clients to even go on there to to search and and do research, awesome. and just to you just to get a good grasp of understanding. A lot of information is out there nowadays with the internet, and a lot of people can get really confused. So, uh, getting into my next question here, with more people staying at home, obviously with this pandemic, uh, have you noticed an increase of uh, visitors? to the REW website? No, for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, when at first, when it, when everything kind of uh, hit the skids in March last year, uh, there was a lot of trepidation. We actually ran a whole bunch of client surveys and a whole bunch of home seeker surveys, and it was fear and loathing all over the place. You know, people were really nervous about what this, what this would mean uh, for the real estate market. But in fact, it was the opposite. And it was like, it drove this big social shift away from, I think, where a lot of particularly younger people were focused, like a lot of younger people were focused on the experiences and career development uh, that 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 time in life afforded them. And with travel shut down and with your, your relationship with the office and the workplace changing, all of a sudden real estate became really, really important. And um, that drove search behavior on our site and for months, we were 60, 80, 100% up year on year uh, in traffic. So huge overall search growth um, between, I would say, Q3 of 2020 and Q2 of 2021. Mm-hmm. More recently, we've seen it kind of normalize. We're still 30, 40% up on 2021, uh, sorry, on 2019's numbers. So like pre-pandemic versus now, the market is still much bigger than it was but it's not nearly at the peak of search uh, traffic that we saw at the beginning of this year. Well, Simon, like when my, my last question here, well, well, mine at least, is in this day and age, evolutionary technological change is so important. Um, mm. We've noticed that REW has gone through an exciting change in its appearance. Um, it, it, it's, it's a really drastic change from what it was before, and it's, 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 it's a more of a now type feel. But besides its appearance, what else has changed? Well, I think driving the the appearance change and driving some of the products and features that we bring to the market and want to bring to the market is really a philosophy change in the business. So, you know, I've been in real estate marketplaces in lots of different countries for, I guess, a fair amount of time now. And the thing that keeps confronting me is that, you know, real estate technology often focuses on the industry and how the industry is set up because that's the easiest way to access listings or the best way to present um, realtors or, uh, you know, you have to be aware of those things and you have to balance uh, the business with those factors. But real estate is ultimately a very, very personal decision, 
Uh, it's, it's, you know, one of our highest value purchases and our least frequent purchases that we make. So mm-hmm. it just makes the, the kind of stakes that much higher for the average person. And so we've, we've, we've got this philosophy that we believe real estate should be far more personal than it is. Mm-hmm. And the technology around it should be far more personal than it is. And so we're trying to take the business away from a broad-based media kind of approach Mm -hmm. and position it more like the marketplace that it should be. You know, one that really meets the needs, uh, understands the home seeker, uh, builds in technology and helpful services throughout the journey. You know, some people take 24 months to find their next home. Mm -hmm. So we need to partner with them and guide them over that full process. And so that's the that's at least the thinking that's coming into the business, and and we think that in the next few months and years we're definitely going to be producing a lot more uh, services and and uh, applications that meet that need on a much, on a far more personal level with people. So Sam, so if I just heard you right, you have more changes possibly on the way coming. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, we had quite a fun year. We, we released REW1 mm-hmm. this year, which is a platform for realtors. Mm-hmm. And basically, we said, let's start this personalization of real estate with the realtor. Let's give them a face to their market that they've never had before. You know, let's take all their proof points, their sales, their listings, uh, the engagement stats that they get from REW. And let's publish them into a feed for each of these realtors so that consumers that sit on our website are able to you know, evaluate the expertise and the performance of agents from the real proof points of the work that they do. Mm -hmm. So that's what we launched this year. Next year, we've got a very, very exciting uh, few products to release to the home seekers themselves. So yeah, lots of evolution on the way. Well, if you can just send me that information before it gets to the public, I'd be grateful. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm really glad also, Simon, you covered um, you guys' new one feature as well on the platform phenomenal. I was taking a look at that actually earlier um, last week and just incredible changes going on with REW.ca and looking forward to all the future changes as well. Now, I wanted to ask you another question here. Uh, Me being from a small town, I I just wanted to know, have you noticed a lot more search traffic in smaller cities throughout British Columbia since the beginning of the pandemic and then throughout the pandemic? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what I kind of mentioned earlier is you've had this decentralization of real estate interest and real estate sales through this pandemic, which I think is really good for the province as a whole. Um, You know, we talk about it in terms of the suburban markets on the lower mainland, and of course they've done really, really well, but other smaller towns, I mean, a few that um, are really doing well in terms of relative search volume to the average are Princeton and Merritt and Comox, uh, Parksville doing really well, Powell River. So people really interested in homes outside of the major metros. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's, that's very cool for the long-term sustainability of those communities and those communities' opportunity to kind of differentiate themselves and imagine what living in a Parksville could look like or living in a, a, a Princeton could look like, you know? So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty excited about what's happened over the last few months. A lot of people think that it might just be temporary. Mm-hmm. And as, as people come back to the office and change their behavior, we'll see a bit of a, you know, people retracting from those communities. I, I think it's unlikely though. I think what we've seen with the relationship between uh, employees and the workplace. I mean, even our example, you know, most of our staff now is completely remote. The office has changed its uh, place in, in our whole, whole work culture. It's a hub, it's an opportunity to meet and collaborate, but it's not essential to the work that you do. And I think that's gonna be true for most companies. Uh, So I see those communities actually being very attractive to people that only need to be in front of their colleagues maybe once or twice a week or in some cases once or twice a month. Got you. No, excellent answer to that. Thank you so much. And then without taking too much more time out of your busy schedule there, I just had one last question for you, Simon, before we let you go here. What is your favorite city in British Columbia and why? 
have to ask you this question before we let you go here, of course. <laughs> you know, putting him on, on the spot there. Like, what that question? And but... you can't pick Vancouver. That's... <laughs> well, kind of question. That's a really difficult question to answer. I mean, how he says the other city? He goes to the other city, what, they're not going to give him coffee then? No, they give him coffee, don't they? Or you can come to Sweden and get you everything. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, 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 is, it is a little bit of a difficult question. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in moving here just before the pandemic, uh, you know, I didn't know that they would burn the ships and down the planes. So, mm-hmm. you know, whether I liked it or not, I was stuck here. Um, and it's turned out to be a fantastic experience because I've really got to immerse myself in this uh, West Coast lifestyle. But <laughs> but having originally been from uh, the coast in South Africa, uh, you know, enjoying the ocean and the, and the water for what it's got to offer, most of my favorites are along this incredible um sea to sky uh, sort of route that we have yes. in in uh, you know just just between Vancouver and Squamish um, but there's a lot there's a lot to love about you know the communities and places around BC that I've visited I, you know I haven't done that many yet uh, you know we obviously got a great office in Olympic Village and Vancouver downtown is fantastic I'm, I'm often there it's got this great energy of work and life the Gulf Islands are a perfect escape I've just loved the the, the little corners that you can disappear into. Um, but we originally settled on the North Shore when we arrived, mm-hmm. and we've actually just bought a place out uh, along West Van towards uh, Horseshoe Bay. Nice. And so for me, that part of um, Vancouver where you're close enough uh, to to work and the city and, and the energy that all of that brings, but you're also – uh, you feel away when you're home. I, I'd say that's my favorite so far. So, so I, I just noticed you, you, you just bought a place. How come I, how come I never got a phone call for this? I thought we were on, I thought we were on close terms here. Yeah, I've got a son, Ricky. It's like uh, what, you know the longest the longest serving uh, uh, REW clients. I should have started with those. Huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, we really really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule, there, Simon, to have this interview with us, and uh, you know, looking forward to all the future changes that rew will be going through and you know just looking forward to seeing the growth of that uh, phenomenal organization that you have there was there anything else uh, you wanted to add just before we let you go here simon uh no no i, I would just say it's been fantastic talking to you guys i'll definitely uh hit you up when some big changes on the horizon for us uh and uh, if anybody wants to find me personally they can find me on linkedin so thanks guys Perfect. Yeah, definitely. And Rick, we're going to have all the information put up so everyone can find everything, yeah, right? we'll be putting it in the description as well, definitely. And make sure, you know, if you're ever in the Surrey area, you give me a call if you ever want to hang out, Simon. <laughs> Show you some interesting places out here, some great Indian food. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Have okay. a great day, yeah. Simon. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, Cheers. you too. Wow. Thank you so much to Simon for having that interview well, with us live on the area. Yeah, you can take the headset out now. Yeah, Jeff, that was great just to get the insight over where search was going for properties um, during COVID and, you know, after COVID. It's great to see that. Did you just ask him out on a date? No, no, I said if. You, you, <laughs> no. When you come to Surrey, you know, <laughs> no. I mean, you completely ignored me. <laughs> Just ask for you. And so it seems like you got kind of, Simon, if you're still watching this, right, Ricky has a 24-hour line <laughs> from the uh, last uh, uh, show that he said. That's right. right. Yeah, but if uh, we end up getting into trouble while we're in Surrey, it's not my fault, Simon. You know, REW.ca can will be like. What are you going to get into? You never know, okay? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Sometimes I don't look well, for trouble. It's just yeah, fine to be uh, someone. Uh, yeah, you have kind of hesitation answers. Okay. I get <laughs> That's saying. right. Yeah, exactly. Um, phenomenal episode there, Jeff. Any last pieces you want to add before we uh, wrap this thing up here? No, get out oh. of my office. I got to work. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, oh, about your book. <laughs> yeah, About yeah. the book. There was a couple people requesting the book. The link, did you want to email or did you want to send them a physical copy? That's a Well, both. I mean, if they both? want a physical copy, I can, we can uh, the link, it, when you go onto the link and you uh, uh, sign up, it'll automatically give you a digital copy. And then from there, I'll contact you. And if you want uh, a physical copy, we'll mail it over to you. Perfect. Okay. And you do have the physical copies in, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some them back here, and then some more coming in. Excellent. And uh, my other my other books are coming out too. That's exciting. Uh, we got some other s- stuff coming out. So we, we got some stuff coming out, which is pretty exciting. Perfect, perfect. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'll definitely be grabbing a couple copies for myself. No. And <laughs> no, they cost me money, Rick. I'm not giving you that. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's coming. And the hoodies, guys. So d- don't forget, obviously, we love your guys' comments. Like. Subscribe to this channel if you want to learn all about living in British Columbia. Obviously, we talk a lot about real estate here as well. And uh, comment for a free hoodie if you like. We talk about real estate on a real estate show? Yeah, I think yes, so. Right? Well, Thank, thanks for making that do, so apparent. <laughs> we do a lot of different things on this channel here, guys. All right. And uh, a lot more videos coming. Oh, I think my ride's here. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Heading out on this one. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> catch you guys later. Bye.